Hello! Uh, hopefully you're able to read the text on this screen, uh, see that this is our completed shell game from Friday. In fact, this is fifth period's completed shell game from Friday, because in that period, while we were under the design tab, we didn't just bring in the two labels and the three buttons. We also changed the background color. Uh, that very difficult task is done by clicking on the screen, not on a button, but on the screen, and then going over here to background color and moving it around. And we just chose to have a nice dark blue color because blue is always a nice, uh, nice, nice, nice background color. Anyway, so today what we're going to be doing, uh, first, if you have not finished the shell game, please go ahead back to that video from Friday. Um, you can check through there. Hopefully it should be descriptive, en descriptive enough for you. You can also ask your peers or myself when I am back, but at least for now when I am not here, you do need to be working on it. Okay. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, changing around our, our our shell game so that way uh, it has it looks a little more like this. The big difference here being the addition of firstly a currency called Strill Points, a win streak, wins and losses where when I run the program, not only is it uh, telling me if I won or lost that specific uh, that specific round of the game. It also deducts strill points every time I lose, counts up every time I lose, counts up every time I win, and returns strill points to me. Also, if I can win multiple times in a row, it should continue to increase my win streak, all up until I lose, and which win streak is set back to zero, wins, stays as it is, until the next time I win. Uh, at the very end of it all, if I get to, and I might make it to it, to negative 150, then I lose entirely. I'll show you the other two, the other screen here is if you make it to positive 150 stroke points, then the you win screen uh, displays. So that's going to be our goal here. I'm going to switch back over to our unfinished product, and let's go through this uh, together. So the first thing we need to uh, understand is that when we are counting up the numbers of wins and losses, we are going to need a few new variables for that. Right now, we just have this one variable, x, which handles our random number generation. Uh, it holds onto whichever shell the ball is currently hiding under, and then is what we use to figure out if we uh, got it right or wrong. Well, now what we need is we'll actually need, since we want to keep a track of wins, losses, a win streak, and our currency, strill points, uh, we have to go ahead and add four new variables for that. So I go here to the variables toolbox, and I'm going to go ahead and just drag four of these uh, x equals blank right over. And for the first one, let's go and put wins, win streak. Uh, uh, games played. I need to learn how to spell. And strill, strill, oh gosh, strill points. Awesome. And of course, when we haven't played anything, that starts at zero, that starts at zero, that starts at zero. And strill points, I'm going to start off at 50, but you can do whatever you like with that. I won't pigeonhole you into choosing 50. All right. So. Uh, that's going to be, those are going to be the variables that hold on to our values. Let's go ahead and make it so that way we can actually see it. Under the design tab, we're going to bring out uh, actually eight new labels. And these eight new labels are going to be uh, keeping track. Firstly, four of the labels are going to be uh, exactly that, labels, labeling which one we are currently on, or which one we, uh, we are tracking to the right of it. You know, as we saw in our example, we have these four labels on the left, which just uh, state what this thing on the right is. The thing on the right is our data. The stuff on the left just describes that data. So <clears throat> we're going to go and put these over here. Uh, since the period decided to put in that background color to the screen, um, I'm going to need, this isn't really readable, so I'm going to need to give this text box itself, this label itself, a background. By the way, just so we make sure, please do make sure you're working with labels, not text input, not text area, but labels. 
The others will will work, but they aren't great for this for this job. All right, and then I'm going to take that and I'm going to duplicate it four times. So that way we can have our four labels. Um, do wins. And do losses. And lastly, our win streak. And then, since I kind of like it, things to not look awful, I'm going to uh, kind of make sure that these all line up a bit. So I'll line up so that way they can be nice and pretty. But you can make your your labels look like garbage if you so choose. I will not stop you, but I might judge you. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's go and get then four more labels, and these labels will uh, be holding the actual values themselves. And since we do expect perhaps to make it into the hundreds, you know, having multiple multiple uh, multiple digits of size. I'm going to make it same font size, 22, like the other. Give it a background color of white and make sure we have just enough, enough space to hold the whole, uh, the whole number. That's, this is that. All right. And then duplicate that one as well. And here's where we're going to start using the IDs a little more. I have eight label I have okay actually I don't have eight labels on the screen I have ten I have these eight down here plus these two from last time so I'm gonna start using these IDs a little more intelligently the labels on the left don't really matter because what's gonna happen is remember how our example is that while we're going through the labels on the right are constantly changing every single time I press a button those labels need to change the labels on the left won't change at all so so when we're over here, these labels, I won't need IDs, but these labels will. Now you might say, oh, but they do have IDs. Well, yes, they will all have IDs. It's just what I mean by saying, when I say that we're not going to use them, I mean if I'm in the code tab and I'm working on this part of the program where I'm doing the set text, which we'll see in a few moments, and I'm actually setting you know, one of these labels equal to the variable uh, you know, wins, and I'm like, okay, I want to go ahead and change the text of this label right here to wins. I look at it and I'm like, oh yeah, there are like 10 labels here. Uh, which one do I use? So to make it a little more uh, easier, a little easier to tell the difference, I'm going to actually label them all differently. Label underscore asterisks. Label wins. Label losses. Label wins. Right. Not too bad, huh? All right. So with each of these labels in place, what's going on ahead? <clears throat> uh, first things first. We have to handle uh, the fact that strill points should start at fifty. And let's go ahead and take care of that now. I'm going to show you the set text. Uh, the set text is found in the UI controls to, in the toolbox. UI controls, of course, meaning user interface, because that's what this is called. It's the thing that the user interfaces with. So I'll put our set text down here. I'm going to set the label for strill points. Ooh, look how easy that is. I'm going to get rid of everything in the second box here including the quotes so that it is just strill points so the purpose of that is I have to make sure it's referring to the uh, variable itself and when I hit run boom, right there immediately changes from 0 to 50 which is what drill points are set equal to and the reason why I'm changing it here rather than going to design and changing it here is because of this let's say I want to make the game different and make you start off at a hundred strill points. Well, then the only change I have to do is just change it up here, and it'll immediately it'll adjust. 
If I wanted to start you off at negative 5, again, I just put it here and it will adjust. Programming is meant to make things a little easier, not only because uh, a computer does stuff for you, but a computer, but you only need to change one or two things to make the computer do things for you. Then I'm going to return the zero points back to 50. All right, let's go ahead and make a new function now. We have one function for make random, but I want another one. I'm going to, so I'm going to drag this function over here, and I'm going to call this one update totals. And update totals, as you might expect, should update all four of these labels. Well, I'm going to start off by bringing that set text label in here. Again, I'm just taking it out of where it was and putting it into the into the function. Because now I'm going to put three more update uh, set text uh, pieces in here. One for the uh, oops, one for losses. One for win. This precision clicking is not working for me. And then one for win streak. All right, good. Now to show this off, for wins, of course, we have a variable wins. For win streak, we have the variable win streak. For losses, I didn't give us a variable for losses. So let's go here to the math toolbox, bring in this subtraction problem. Just um, overwrite what was in that box for changing the label boxes so that it's games played played minus wins and that gives us number of losses and honestly my only reason for doing that is just to show off a little math function in the middle of the program for you guys okay cool now you'll notice it doesn't do anything because we again have to call the function just like how we call make random at the beginning to get a random number let's go and put the the call for update totals here okay and we're right back to that Everything is as we expect. We are ready to begin. All right, now, we're going to, like we did with the other one, we're going to just change button one, and from there, make the rest of them uh, work based on how button one works. So the first thing we need to do is, since we pressed the button, I'm going to go ahead and add one more games played. So that means I go to variables. I go to the x equals thing. I'm going to say, okay, games played equals, and then I'm going to go to math, get this, plus, this addition problem here, go games played plus one. Hopefully that makes sense. We add one because we just played another game. All right. <clears throat> Actually, that should, oh, yeah. Um, then you won't see any changes to that yet because we haven't called update totals right here where we have make random. I'll put that in at the end. All right. Uh, next, if we got it right, uh, we have to go ahead and add this part here. Number of wins equals wins plus one. Oh, no, I, did, I typed it out. Well, that's fine. You can do that. That's fine. Yeah. You don't actually have to draft, take this stuff from the math class, from the math toolbox. You can just write it out and then hit enter, and it'll work just fine. And then it, it'll recognize it itself. I usually start with these things just so that way, if you're not used to coding, you can be comfortable with the drag and drop stuff. And plus, the drag and drop stuff is kind of fun. Okay. So if we win, we want to do that. If we lose, we don't really have to do anything because losses is already handled by games played minus uh, games played minus uh, minus the number of wins but what we do need to do is we need to change our win streak because we've now won so win streak should be equal to win streak plus one right so one more for the win but also if we get it wrong if we lose I do need to set win streak back to zero Lastly, at the end of this, I need to call my function for update totals. Update totals updates the totals in those boxes, and let's see it. Perfect. I win, so I get one more win. One win streak. Click it again. I lost, so my win streak is back to zero. My wins is still at one. My loss is still at one, is now at one. Uh, let's go ahead and change our strill points now. 
I'm going to go back to variables. I'm going to get that x equals. I'm going to say shrill points. For if I win, should be set equal to shrill points plus uh, plus 10. I think. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go up by tens. And otherwise, I'm going to go shrill points equals shrill points minus 10. Pretty easy. And with that, I have completed my first button. The other buttons don't deal with this stuff yet, but one does. All right, after that, we'll have to make it so that way we can have the win and lose. But first, let's go ahead and just add in things for buttons two and three. Actually, no, no. We're going to we're gonna put in the, the lose function. I want to do that one first instead. Sorry about that. All right, this stuff is actually not too difficult. And um, hopefully, hopefully you can follow along. Let's go to the design tab. I'm going to click the, this drop down up here. You might not have done this yet, or you might have, and it got really confusing. But we're going to make a new screen. This new screen is going to be you lose. I'm going to put a lose label here. There's something that says you lose. Increase font size to like 66 or something. That looks pretty cool, right? That makes sense. Let's go ahead and make a new screen. It's going to be you win. Got you win screen, got you lose screen. So let's go back here, which should still be our main screen. And, uh, oh, yeah, you know what? I should probably make a note about that. Hey, guys, if you're having trouble um, because every time you hit run, it starts on the wrong screen, like let's say for whatever reason it was uh, starting on this, on, on the lose screen instead, even when you go back to screen one and hit run, it still starts here. All you have to do to fix that, go to design, Go to the screen you want to be, the, the default, the original screen that we start on, and then click on this Make Default button, and that'll fix your problem. Just in case that happens. That's how you fix it. All right, so let's go to the code. I'm going to go to the Update Totals button, uh, Update Totals function. And after we've updated everything, you know, we, had that, we wanted to add that lose condition in, right? Where if they get a negative 150, uh, it takes them to the lose screen, but if they get a positive 150, they should go to the win screen. Well, that I handle by just going to the controls. Let's get an if statement. So if, remember I have to use the equality operator that has two equal signs. If strill points equals positive 150, I'm going to go to UI controls then. I'm going to scroll down and find the set screen and I'm going to set screen to you win. Otherwise and this is actually pretty important please don't use else for this if you can go ahead and navigate it for yourself and you feel fine with it go ahead and use the else if but otherwise just go ahead and do what I'm doing here and have two if statements that's completely fine. Just don't have an if and an else because you're going to have a problem with that, quite obviously. Okay, let's set screen. If we get to negative 150, you lose. And let's see it. All right, let's see. We're on our way to losing. Boom. Perfect. Okay. And honestly, that's just about it. Make sure that this, um, that the things that we added here, this line on line 24, this line, these lines on 28, 29, and 30, these lines on 34 and 35, and this line on 38, all get added to buttons two and to button to three. Make sure. Uh, actually, after that, it should be all ready. We will have a completely functioning shell game. Okay, that's it for this one. Guys, have a great one. Behave yourselves, and have a good day.